Namaste. <clears throat> we're talking today, again, as we've been talking for a few times here, and it's very central, talking about the ego and how to get rid of it. It is the central thing that you have to get rid of. God is dreaming this entire show, but he's dreaming it through you. You are the center of the universe as far as you are concerned. Back a few centuries ago, people thought the world was the center of everything. Then science discovered that the universe is so vast as to have a hundred billion galaxies. And so people lost the thought of there being any center. But now I've come to you with this new truth that you are the center of everything. God is center everywhere, circumference nowhere. And so once you've understood who you are, you don't have to go out and become one with the universe. You automatically discover that you are that. Once you discover that you were here, you discover that he is you and that you were, there is no other reality to be found. God who seems so infinite, is so infinite, is something you can reach in your own self. But this is another very interesting thing. Jesus said, suffer, Jesus Christ said, suffer little children to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven and of God. Now how can God, who created this vast, complex show, be like a child? Well, he isn't ignorant like a child. He isn't selfish or foolish like a child. But the one thing that a child has that grown-ups don't have is no expectations. He's more at that central zero point. As I said, when you are zero, you're like a little child. You have no expectations of life. You don't want anything. You don't... Um, the regret anything, you're just here. And from that simple center in your own point of zero, shunya, that zero in you, you can do anything you want to in this world. From this point, you can become an engineer or whatever. I remember when I was in college, I must have been born with a few of these truths because uh, I put them to good use. I was taking a course in Greek, well, I had reached the point where I was fed up with college. I didn't want any more of it. I never went to class. I went every now and then, let's say once a month. And toward the end, when the professor was preparing our class for um, the final exam, he would pause every now and then and say, well, of course, there are some people in this class who might as well not even appear. And everybody looked at me and laughed. And of course, it seemed absurd because the only words I could really recognize if I was translating from the Greek was ho, which means a, uh, and the. I didn't know the language. And I decided a week before that I would really sit down and study it. So I picked up the book and, oh, it was so boring. I just wasn't interested. I said, okay, I'll study twice as long tomorrow. Tomorrow came, I said, well, three times as long. Finally, the night before the exam came, Sunday night, and I realized I had not studied at all. And I had the exam the next day, and all I knew was a uh, and the, and perhaps one or two other words, but almost nothing. And so, in my desperation, they say that necessity is the mother of invention. Well, she displayed all the right motherly instincts on this occasion, because suddenly I said, you're a Greek. Well, suddenly being Greek, I no longer had that thought of this is foreign to me, this is Greek to me, and so on. And I was only, uh, somehow in, I tuned myself to the consciousness of what it takes to speak Greek. It was just an amazing experience. I picked up the book and I recognized everything. It just came to me like remembering my own language. I went through the whole book. I remembered a few um, highlights. I studied for two hours. And then I appeared to the exam, for the exam. Also, we had been studying the New Testament, and this divine guidance, whatever it was inside me, gave me the right passage in English to translate into, uh, from the Greek into English. Anyway, there were only two people who passed that exam. It was a difficult exam that year, but I was one of them. Now, how can you do that? This was just a good samskar in my life, I suppose. Because I understood that if you tune into a subject, you don't have to get it mentally and absorb all the pieces like a jigsaw puzzle. Tune into that wave of 
consciousness and you have that. So from your zero, you can become an engineer, you can become a poet, you can become a mathematician, a businessman, anything you want to be. But you can, you can be extraordinarily complex because you are simple. Seems like a contradiction. And one of the absolutely beautiful things about the spiritual path is that it's so full of contradictions. They're all true and they all seem to contradict each other, but you get back to that little zero and you see it all makes sense. And so I've learned to write music also. When uh, many years ago, I had, I had also, music was something I'd studied music composition for one semester, but I never went to class. And uh, in the final exam, I was supposed to write a melody for a figured bass. And all of a sudden, this beautiful melody, oriental kind of melody came into my head and it fit the bass perfectly. And he gave me a good grade on that exam just because of that melody. But I didn't know anything about composition. And uh, I was in Yosemite, which is one of the most beautiful parks in the world. And I was just the last day there. And I happened to see a couple of young men, high teenagers, sitting on a, on a railing of a bridge playing the guitar and singing, and singing out of tune. And I felt like singing, so I'd studied singing as a young man, and I, I uh, had a good voice. And so anyway, I asked them if they'd like me to sing. Oh, yes, we'd love it. So I sang, but I couldn't think of what to sing. I couldn't sing bhajans. I couldn't sing um, my guru's cosmic chants both of which are beautiful, but these boys wouldn't understand that. I couldn't sing the classical music I'd been studying. I mean, really, classical music is just like pop music with a different twist to it. O cessate di piagarmi, o lasciatemi morir. Oh, stop bugging me and let me die is all the message. It sounds good in Italian, but it doesn't mean anything more than that. I thought, what can I sing them? Then I remembered a Negro spiritual which was Swing Low Sweet Chariot, and I did know that one, and so I sang that, and they loved it. And they said, oh, you've got to sing for a, a party we're having tonight. So I went there, and what did I sing? Swing Low Sweet Chariot. Swing Low Sweet Chariot, come in for to carry me home. Swing Low Sweet Chariot, come in for to carry me home. I looked over Jordan, and what did I see? Come in for to carry me home, a band of angels coming after me. Come in for to carry me home, swing low, etc. And I sang that, and they all loved it. And I thought the next day as I was driving home, well, it would be wonderful if I could share these teachings with people through song also. I was no longer in my guru's organization. They decided that they were going a different route, so they take the high road and I'll take the low road, or vice versa, whatever it was. But it was the best thing that ever happened to me because it made me free to do what my guru had given me to do. Anyway, I was thinking this would be a wonderful way to share with people, but what can I sing? And then suddenly the thought came to me, well, maybe God, I can write my own songs. And I thought, of, I thought that, and I said, God, give me a song. Suddenly, there it was. What was the song? Farther away than the stars. I have a love who's far away, far away, far away. I have a love who's far away, Farther away than the stars, and so on. I won't sing the whole song now. But it was a beautiful song, and I stopped at a milkshake stand and wrote it down on a paper napkin. And my brother had left a, a Martin guitar, which was a very good guitar. And so I decided to, to uh, try to learn the guitar and see if I could write some more songs. And I wrote two or three more. And uh, somebody heard me singing and said, would you like to give a concert? Well, mind you, I'd only been playing the guitar for uh, three weeks, and I said yes, which is probably the most stupid thing. Anybody, anybody with any common sense would know that it takes longer to learn a guitar than that. 
But I thought, well, at least it'll make me practice. So anyway, I bit the bullet and it uh, didn't kill me. And so when the evening came, there were 200 people there. The hall was completely filled and they wanted to create atmosphere. So they turned out all the lights and had a candle burning behind me on a mantelpiece. If there was one thing I needed to see, it was those strings. <clears throat> but somehow I carried it off and I, I could tell stories and whatever. Anyway, they, they enjoyed it and that launched my musical career. But I have found again and again and again, I have never had to think, do I want the melody to go this way or that way? All I have had to do is say, God, give me a melody that says this, 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 and this. And it happens just like that. You'll be amazed if you can get yourself out of the picture and worry about, oh, what are those people going to think of me? I don't know how the chords. I just enjoyed it, and they enjoyed it. And uh, I didn't make a fool of myself because it was joy. The more you feel that God is working through you, the more you will find that all sorts of marvelous things can happen. So think in those terms. Think he's doing it through me. Don't think, can I do it? Think in terms of what you're giving out, not in terms of what people are liking, whether they appreciate it, whether they think you're intelligent or stupid. doesn't matter. If, uh, as I said, that was one of my ways of never being nervous, just thinking, well, if I'm a fool, then it doesn't matter if they know it. And if I'm not a fool, they're wrong, so what does it matter? People's opinions don't matter. This will help you very much in getting rid of the ego. I remember one night, I, was, I had intellectual ego when I was young, and I didn't like it. It made me very dry. And uh, I remember one night I was in my meditation room and I looked at this ego of mine and I said, I'm tired of this ego. I said, get out! And I said it with lots of force. And all of a sudden I felt myself free. And I remember I came out of doors and my guru was looking out over Los Angeles, over the city, above the tennis courts at Mount Washington. And I knelt for his blessing and touched his feet and he touched me on the head and he said, very good. But I've never felt it since then. There's a man who used to be alcoholic. And uh, one time, after some five years of not taking alcohol, he went to his closet and began to drink. And he was so angry with himself for giving up and giving in that he took every bottle of whiskey and rum and everything else and threw it on the pavement with great violence and just said, I'm tired of this. I'm through with it. I'll never drink again. The violence of that absolute affirmation, absolute decision, freed him, and he never had another desire for drink. So that too is a good way of getting rid of the ego. Bring it to that point where you just are absolutely sick of it, and then with great power, of willpower, just drive it from your mind. Another way, and that's, that comes only at certain moments in life, but you can get rid of habits that way. Normally it takes 8 to 12 years to get rid of a deep habit. But you can get rid of it in an instant because it's only a matter of the concentration of your mind. As my guru said to me when I asked him how to help to overcome habits, he said habits are only concentration of the mind. Change that, conscious, change that focus of concentration and you will no longer have the habit. And if you can do it with enough willpower, you can do it in an instant. Habits are not you. Habits in the Bhagavad Gita are Duryodhana, the teacher, symbolized by that. You see, the whole Bhagavad Gita is full of deep, deep teachings. Dhritarashtra, the blind mind, Sanjaya, introspection, um, Duryodhana, material desires, and uh, um, um, Dronacharya, habit. Again and again, you find these, all of these people are symbolic of different spiritual realities. And so anyway, another trick is to just feel that, that uh, don't keep bringing your mind back to yourself. Let other people do the talking. Don't feel you've got to be heard. Don't speak to be heard. Speak to, be, speak to have something when you have something important to say. If people like to feel themselves more important than you, give them that privilege. Don't get into that game. Don't get into that little struggle that people are always having 
with other people. What about me? I'm, 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 I'm. No, don't do that. Find the joy. And this is the, this is the way to overcome a bad habit and the way to establish a good one. Find the joy in the good habit. In this case, the freedom of not having to constantly think me, me, me. You will find, interestingly enough, that the more you do that, the more people are cooperative with you. When I go to a shop, for example, I don't bargain the way usually people do. Oh, it's not worth that much money. That'll put their dander up. They'll say it's worth much more than that pay charged. But you have to say something more. Well, I know it's worth every bit that you're charging. In fact, I'm amazed you're charging so little, but I can't afford that. Think in their things of, in terms of their needs. And you will find that then they will think in terms of your needs. Again and again, I have come into shops where they're bargaining fiercely with other people. Then they come to me and they say, well, what kind of a discount can I give you? Of their own free will. The more you wish for their happiness as well as yours, the more other people also will want your happiness instead of theirs. This is a trick that is well worth learning because you'll find that wherever you go, you have friends. And if you are living in a village with a thousand people and you're competing with all of them, you have 999 enemies. You will find in this case that everywhere, even strangers will greet you and want to help you and want to know, help you to be what you want, to get what you want, to go where you want. You'll go to complete strangers. Many men are afraid to ask for directions. I find it a pleasure because people like to give to others. Give them that opportunity and you will get rid of your own ego also in the bargain. Namaste. Joy to you.